The lecture 17 covers section 6.2 through 6.2.3. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to differentiate between the average and true axial strain within a member. You should be able to understand the relationship between stress and strain for ductile materials and also identify key properties of these materials, such as the yield stress, ultimate stress, as well as the linear elastic region on the stress strain diagram for both low carbon steels and aluminum alloys. You should be able to understand the relationship between shear stress and shear strain and how they are related via the shear modulus, as well as understand the formulation of Poisson's ratio and how it relates our modulus of elasticity to our shear modulus. Now the motivation stems from lecture 16, where we learned that the stress developed within a member is dependent upon our applied load and the cross-sectional area of the member. For us to analyze materials, we want to remove the geometric dependence from our expressions. That is, members experiencing the same load, but with differing geometries are going to experience different stresses, which makes it difficult to quantify our materials performance. To do this, we're going to consider a thought experiment. Let's consider our bar with a constant cross-sectional area A and a length L. And we are going to apply an axial load P to the bar. Our bar is going to deform some distance delta. Now, if we plot our applied force versus our deformation delta, we'd have the following curve. It'd be linear at first, then we'd have a dip and followed by a non-linearity. Now, this gives us information about our behavior of the material as a function of our applied load. But what happens if we change the geometry of our bar? For instance, if we double our cross-sectional area, we will have to apply 2p to elicit the same deformation. This makes sense theoretically, and we can prove this experimentally. Now, in both cases, a bar with an area A and applied load P, and our bar with an area 2A and applied load 2P, they'd be experiencing the same normal stress, where sigma would be equal to R per A. In both cases, our deformation, delta, is going to be the same, and our initial length, L, is the same. Thus, the ratio of delta per L is the same. For us to begin to remove some of our geometrical dependence, we have to introduce the concept of strain. And strain is defined as our deformation per length. Therefore, our average axial strain, denoted as epsilon, is defined as delta per L. Let's consider a bar with a length of 0.600 meters with a uniform cross-sectional area. And this bar experiences a deformation of 150 microns due to applied loading we want to determine the corresponding strain. For us to do this, we're going to recall strain is equal to our deformation per length, where we'd have 150 microns divided by our initial length of 0.600 meters. Or we'd have a strain of 250 e to minus six meters per meters. Now we note meters per meters is a dimensionless quantity, so we can report this as 250 mu. That is, our units of strain are dimensionless, However, we are going to retain a dimension associated with it, either meter per meter, centimeter per centimeter, inch per inch, etc. Or what we can do is we can take the prefix that would denote the magnitude of our unit system and solely leave that. For instance, we'd have 250 mu.